And the waters really continue to rise out here on North Cherokee Drive. The only way to get around is with a four wheeler or boat. Moments after the second bomb threat, employees used the news service and dialed star 57 on their phone to reveal the block number. As you can see, there's bikes, toys, and other family memories, like this page from a photo album, just scattered throughout the yard. Those on the Save the Library campaign say if their funding is cut, it isn't their last chapter. The goal is to connect the bike path that ends here at the Horticulture Center on Johnston Street to connect Phase 2 to the main campus here at UL. So far, no decision has been made, and right now, jurors are deliberating. Earlier this afternoon, they did hear closing arguments from the federal prosecutors, as well as defense attorney Quincy Richard. Now, the federal prosecutors are saying this case is about bribery, conspiracy, and selling votes for cash money. About 10,000 tons of recycled concrete and brick is being used to create the artificial reef. KHC's Chris Welty joins us live from Lafayette High with a preview. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Tracy. As you said, we're here live at Lafayette High School, and some of the first buses are already lining up in the front circle. All right, and final question, what are you looking forward to the most this year? I think we're looking forward to some uh, simplicity. We, we know what we want to do now. We put the turnaround plan in place. Everybody kind of understands their roles, and I think we're going to have a lot smoother year in terms of people knowing what they're to do and what our expectations are. All right, great. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I know quite a busy man this morning. Chris Welty is live in that neighborhood tonight. Chris, do police believe today's crime is connected to the car burglaries on Tuesday? Right now, no. Police do not think the uh, person caught on camera today is the same person responsible for Tuesday's crimes. Right now, we're live on Renee Avenue in Lafayette, where several cars were broken into earlier this week. Now, either way, residents in this neighborhood say they're worried the suspect is becoming bolder. The Charles Reed neighborhood was lit with blue police lights Friday morning. Officers set up a perimeter looking for the potential car burglary suspect. It's very unsettling to come out again when it's not quite light and then have all this happen. Police say the man was on a bike riding in the neighborhood when someone called 911. It's just crazy. It makes you feel so uneasy. And, and late in the morning, you know, for, I guess, the typical criminals. Police showed up. They say the suspect ran. Around 540, the suspect is caught on the same cameras, hopping a fence, running across a driveway, going to the home across the street. Less than two minutes later, police pass by and the suspect moves to the next home. Well, they're going to continue to check the area uh, and looking for that opportunity to take advantage of people. It's an invasion of my privacy. My, uh, I don't feel safe right now. Trisha Bordelon lives in the neighborhood and is hoping police will make an arrest soon. I do have... A lot of confidence in the Lafayette Police Department. They will catch these thugs. I can't wait. A, it's not a day too soon that they will catch these thugs. Police say every single one of these crimes could have been prevented by locking car doors. If you have any information on these crimes, call Lafayette Crime Stoppers at 232 TIPS. Reporting live in Lafayette, Chris Welty, KTC TV3. Stephen, the waters really continue to rise out here on North Cherokee Drive. The only way to get around is with a four-wheeler or boat, and the water has risen about two to three feet just today. Since Friday afternoon, dozens of volunteers braved the floodwaters on North Cherokee Drive, rescuing those in need. We got here that people walking in water chest deep, so I went and got the boat. Jonathan Abair and his team pulled more than 30 people, including their pets, to safety. People were carrying shopping bags with a change of clothes and a few valuables before leaving. Homes now look like islands. The rescue boats, a sigh of relief for people looking to get out. I come through here yesterday in about one ton, but I wouldn't pull it out again. I don't know when this thing's going to let us back down. Despite the water rising, some neighbors are taking their chances and waiting to see how high it gets before they leave. I got some chickens and that I got to keep feeding and. So we're going to stay until I got to get out. And the volunteers will be out here until about 1030 tonight. They'll take a break and return tomorrow morning. And remember, if you do need immediate assistance, it's best to call 911. They do have boats on standby for anyone who needs to be rescued. Three's on the street in Crowley. Chris Welty, KTC TV3. Heading to serve his 20 years, Wade Loesch had no problem opening up to us. His trial was set to begin this week, but in a last minute decision, most accepted a plea deal. Why did you change your plea from not guilty to no contest? Because they, <clears throat> because they finally gave me the answers that I was asking the questions to from the beginning. 
and I was guilty, without a doubt. I just know that I have a substance abuse problem, and I need to take care of it. Us being prepared and ready for trial makes them make some decisions. Lowe's changed his plea from not guilty to no contest before Judge Christian Earls Monday morning. He wanted to get this behind him. He intends to get treatment while he's in jail. He expects uh, sincere uh, uh, sadness about what happened uh, to Casey. In court, Assistant District Attorney Jay Prather said Loesch's blood alcohol level was .08 when he crashed into Casey Barra McGrew's car and killed her. Anytime you can get a maximum sentence on a vehicular homicide, uh, it's always good. It doesn't bring back the person who was killed. Uh, it does give the family some relief that it is put to rest. I just feel remorse for the family that lost a loved one. I mean, that's, I have to do my time. That's all there is. In Lafayette, Chris Waltz, KTC TV3. The sights and sounds of the French Quarter are live as fans pack the Crescent City for the bowl game. One of the first stops for many, Bourbon Street. You gotta go get you a beer and something to eat first. Emily East is an Acadiana native and a UL alum. She works on Bourbon Street at Bourbon Heat, and she set out to create the Raging Cajun Fan Headquarters for the New Orleans Bowl. Always friendly, always good looking, always ready to have a good time, and it just, you know, it makes me proud to be from that area. Hey, but it's all about the Cajuns and having fun and painting the town red. They and you know what, what happens in New Orleans? Well, this is going to get back to Lafayette. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Though Bourbon Street may look empty right now, one bar is preparing for an influx of people, and they even created special Raging Cajun drinks. You order more liquor whenever you know people from Lafayette are coming because I'm from Crowley and I went to school at UL too, so I warned them. I said, look, people from Lafayette know how to board it. They could, they could teach New Orleans how to board it. Les Le Bon Roulet. 